Lupin Pearl. Podcast. Lupin Pearl. Podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Lupin Pearl Podcast. My name is Loop, but you can call me Louie. And my name's Pearl, but you can call me Jules. And I think we got that backwards, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Today is our fifth episode, which I think is pretty cool because we're celebrating five years together oh, yeah. Look as at that. a couple. And we're recording this on Valentine's Day. Yeah. Whoa. So many things. And that's so it. Like that, I, I mean, those are all the things. Yeah, but they're all really but big things. But they're all things. big things, yeah. Five years. Five. Count them. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. It's the last one, too. It's crazy. I know. It's awful, isn't it? <laughs> we also celebrated my 30th birthday last weekend? Yeah, last weekend. Yeah. Wow. Just last weekend. Uh, we got away from the city and went to Yosemite, and it was really lovely. It was 65 degrees. Yeah. Very abnormal for early February. Strange. No snow. No snow. But we stayed in a beautiful cabin right on a creek. Yeah. Got to knit by the water. Yeah. Which is really cool. Yeah, it was really nice. Just like a nice vacation from our little bubble. Apart- uh, yeah. Bubble is one way to say it. I was going to say cage. Oh, great. <laughs> Today, someone asked us how we met. Mm. And it's a very, very interesting story. So interesting. Wow. It's People are going to make a movie about it one day. Yeah, probably. It'll it's be bigger than The Notebook. Really good. Would you like to tell the amazing story? You're so good at telling it. Yeah. We met on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> I swiped right because in his first picture on the dating app, it was him with a crochet hook in his mouth and a little mini crocheted version of him hanging from the end of the hook, and I thought, well, finally, a guy who crafts is yeah. nice. <laughs> and I swiped right because it's a numbers game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in danger! I feel like you don't like me today. Uh, I do like you. I do like you today, but I also liked you yesterday, and I'll like you tomorrow, unless you do something terrible. Like what? Like, talk about the announcements. Uh oh. What? I have a few announcements to make. No! <laughs> so we have a few announcements. First, we've scheduled our very first Loop and Pearl live stream. It's yes. going to be on the Club Crochet YouTube channel. And we've chosen February 21st at 1 p.m. Pacific, which is next weekend. I think if you're mm-hmm. watching this the week it came out, it's this Sunday. The coming Sunday. Yeah. At, at 1 p.m. Pacific. Pacific Standard Time. Yeah. Yes. We are going to craft and chat and answer your questions in the chat if you're joining us live. Maybe we'll play a video game. Maybe we'll play a board game. We're just going to hang out. Yeah, we're just going to hang out and make things. It'll be nice. Or else. Uh, and then another announcement is Jules started her own YouTube channel. It's called Knit by Jules, and she's going to be making videos of knitting tutorials, as well as, I think, just fun videos that have to do with knitting, Mm -hmm. things that she's made. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So if you want to learn how to knit, if you don't know how to knit, my very first video is going to be a Knitting 101 basic learning how to cast on knit bind off video. So that'll be out really soon. Go to the channel, hit subscribe, and you'll get a notification when it's ready. Yeah, you can find the links where you find all of our links, which you can find at down in the description or at clubcrochet.com slash podcast. Okay, I've got a quick question before we go into our spiels. Okay. What is your favorite date that we've ever been on? Oh my gosh. That's a good question. That's it's, such a good question. Yeah, it's not even on the list of things it's to talk not, about. That's not on the agenda. Yeah. You blindsided me. Do you have one in mind? Is that why you're asking that? Um, you're, no, you're you have to answer either. it first because I'm unprepared. Okay, does it have to be like standalone date or can it be a moment we've had together yeah. traveling? Do do the do what is your favorite moment together? Just us two. Though. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is the first one that comes to mind. He's going to be uh, the same one as me. It it is, I think. Kyoto. Yeah. <laughs> we went to Kyoto uh and Tokyo last year during Thanksgiving week. And we chose that week because it's not not a lot of tourists are there. 
And when we went to Kyoto, it was pretty deserted because of the weather. It had rained in the morning the day mm-hmm. we got there. And our first full day, we decided to go to a cemetery. I'm forgetting what it's called, but it's in a beautiful, it's beautiful wonderful. park that's up on the hill in Kyoto. And it looks over the whole town. And if you keep going up and up this hill, there's this magical, ancient cemetery. And you pay your respects uh, before you enter. And you're quiet when you're walking around in there. We only saw one group of people, and they came and went pretty quickly. And it was just us. And in a split second, we knew to be quiet and just listen to the wind. Yeah. And these leaves flew off the trees, and it was fall. Yeah. So they were all these colors of burnt orange and red and gold. Yeah. And then the birds flew above us, and we could just hear the wind moving was, through everything. Uh, I felt like we weren't alone. Yeah, it in felt that like moment. it really it it was a truly magical feeling. It, it was that was that would be the definition of that emotion for me. It was magic. magic. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I agree. I, that is my favorite moment as well. Yeah, but yeah. now th- that doesn't really answer the date question. I feel like I uh, cheated. Yeah, you cheated, but that was also my answer, so I don't... <laughs> we both cheated. I'm so... <laughs> okay, now let's go to the knitter's nook. Show us what you got for us. Okay. Um, This is awkward because the first thing I want to show you isn't knitting. <laughs> the knitter's nook, where we show all the things Jules has crocheted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you watched last episode, you won't be surprised to see that I finished this crocheted cowl that's part of the Sun and Fog collection. It's called the Pebbles and Sand Cowl, and uh, it's big. It's really big. Uh, the yarn I used is a little thicker than the yarn they recommend. They recommend a light fingering in the pattern, and this yarn was labeled fingering, but it it, it crochets a little thicker. I sized up to a G for this project. Yeah. And I I did that because when I tried it on, what was it? What did I use before the G? An E? Mm-hmm. It was too tight. And I wanted it to, to have drape to it. And I wanted the stitches to really open up. So anyway, this is what it looks like on. I like that it lays in the front like that. Yeah. Personally. I really love the stitch pattern. It was so easy to memorize. Only four rows. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're an experienced crocheter, you can whip this up in like two days. Um, yeah. I did 20 repeats for the cowl as it was written in the pattern. Uh, the pattern also comes with instructions to make a stole, which is basically a scarf. Um, and I think this would be really, really lovely as a scarf. Yeah, thinner though, right? Yeah, a little thinner and way more Another repeats. Couple, yeah. And you would start in the center of, let's say you're, you have the scarf on and it's just hanging. You start from the center, work one way and then start the other way oh. so that it mirrors so, yeah 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 that makes sense yeah and that you would need sense. more yarn i only used one skein of royal b uh purple couch collection fingering weight this was her first batch um so she she's mastered the yarn since then <laughs> this was like trial run but i yeah. love it i love the color i think it's great yeah i like the muted purple a lot yeah um i think that one thing you should try doing that I think you would really enjoy is Tunisian crochet. I think it's like right up your alley. I think you're right too. When I worked at a yarn store, we had a Tunisian crochet book sitting out and I would look through it a lot. It's like the stitches you can do with Tunisian crochet are always wonderful. I highly suggest anybody that's interested in Tunisian crochet to check it out, give it a shot. Um, do you have any Tunisian crochet videos? I, you know, I have a really old video on my old channel, Louis Loops, but I really should consider doing some more. Um, I actually use Tunisian. I'm totally taking over your nook, and I'm sorry about that. Um, I actually use Tunisian crochet to make a uh, an iPhone cover a long oh. time ago, like five, six years ago when iPhones were still blocky. Yeah. Um, I used the Tunisian crochet to make the back of the cover, and uh, it was just the coolest. I, I loved I got addicted to Tunisian crochet then. Hmm. You should consider doing it. I really think you'd like it a lot. I shall consider. Yeah. But anyway, this is my very second <laughs> crochet very second. project. Not very first, but very second crochet project. And I think it came out pretty great. And this one's definitely like more it. complicated than your last one, though, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, I especially like the little uh, scallop edges. Mm -hmm. These little like uh, bobbles or puffs? Oh, well, I'm talking about the edge here, but yes, I like the puffs. Mm -hmm. They were the hardest part. They were the hardest stitch for sure. So yeah, that is the Pebble and Sands cowl. Uh, If you want to join our Sun and Fog knit along, it's not too late. It goes to the end of February. Check out the Sun and Fog patterns on Instagram or Ravelry when you just search the Sun and Fog Winter 2021. And you'll find this pattern along with my knit pattern, the Marina Cowl, and tons of other knitting and crochet patterns that are eligible for the knit along. And crochet along. Today I have some stash acquisition. Surprise, surprise. I've been (laughs) shopping, but it's small. Yeah. I got one skein of Teeny Button Studios uh, new Bridgerton collection colorway, The Art of the Swoon. And I just loved her whole collection. I had a really hard time picking just one color, but I knew I just wanted one skein of sock weight or fingering weight that I could use for a, like a lacy cowl mm-hmm. or a lacy shawl. Um, I'm brainstorming a design to use this yarn for. Any any hints that you can give us? I'm going to practice my crochet. Oh, Man, you really are. You got hooked. I got hooked. Oh my this gosh. Is a problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, this yarn is the, her soft sock yarn, and that's a uh, fingering weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. So really good for socks, but I like to use sock yarn for accessories all the time. Mm-hmm. I really like the speckles. Yeah. I was wondering how on. much are those gonna like uh collect, do you think? Oh, that really with. depends. Um, sometimes people actually plan their pooling mm-hmm. when they do their swatch, and they want those speckles to line do up. Do they cut different. it off and then get... That you can. Yeah. Um, it really depends on the dye or the dye process, mm-hmm. if it, that's even possible to do pooling with their yarn. Usually with speckles, it's not a, a, a problem. The speckles will, will be spread out enough that they won't pool. Um, one way to prevent pooling in your projects with a hand dyed yarn, whether it's variegated, speckled, multi-toned, uh, you have two balls of yarn and you alternate between the balls as you're working your project. So when you're oh, working, okay, so you can control, yeah, that exactly. Makes sense. So you can spread out the color. So let's yeah. say you have two skeins, uh, in a batch of like seven skeins, and you're knitting a sweater, and these two skeins look kind of different, like yeah. one looks a little darker than the other, then you can alternate every row or every other row, and that will spread out those tones, and it will be less likely for pooling to happen. Uh-huh. And like big dark splotches being together or light areas being together. Just a little trick. <laughs> a little trick of the trade. A little trick. But this is just one skein, and right. I think it will be perfect for an accessory. And I, with this lighter tone, I'm thinking lace and... Kind oh of like yeah, definitely. Scallopy lace, like really yeah. open, airy. Hey, maybe you could try. Well, I don't know. I've never heard of Tunisian crochet with a with something so thin. But oh well, maybe. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with at least something well, I'm more. Yeah, uh, more comfortable, comfortable a little bit. Yeah. 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 So if you want to check out her entire Bridgerton collection, I highly recommend it. She has a bunch of really beautiful colorways. Oh, Bridgerton! It's after the TV, the TV show. show. Right, yeah, the TV right. show Bridgerton on Netflix, adults only. Really good show. (laughs) So show us your work in progress. I will. I'm doing a test knit for a fellow designer, and uh, it's intense. I'm not going to lie. It's a color work sweater that she's calling the side eye sweater, and it's by Caitlin Shepard. And this is what I have so far. Uh, It's knit from the bottom up, which means I cast it on at the hem there in the dark brown color. I'm going to make it a little closer. And then I did ribbing, and I started the color work pattern. I'm a few inches, currently, a few inches uh, below where I'm going to separate for the sleeves. So I have a lot of color work to do before I separate for the sleeves. And what's interesting about this, because it's all color work and it's all stranded color work, as you can see on the wrong side, all those strands, Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to do a, a trick called steaking for the sleeves. Sounds like a TikTok dance. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Steaking is a technique that I am absolutely terrified of because it involves you cutting your yarn, cutting your knit project. But before you cut anything, you reinforce either side of the project. So you imagine the scissors are going up and through your knitting or crochet. Oh, you're so bored. You're yawning. Imagine- no, 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 no. I'm, that's not why I'm, that's not, no. But 
So you cut up the side of it. Right. But before you do that, you need to reinforce the stitches on yeah. both sides. So and, just in case. And guess what you can do to reinforce the you crochet it. Crochet. Yeah. You do a, a chain through all, every single stitch vertically. Uh huh. And then you can cut your yarn safely because it'll unravel until that chain. That's the plan. You could also use a sewing machine to sew those two sides before you cut your work, but I'm scared of sewing machines. Yeah, that that uh, seems terrifying. I don't think I would ever <laughs> try that with crochet. Yeah. I don't think you, I mean, you probably can figure out a way, but I don't think I would ever yeah. do that. Uh, what I'm going to do when I get to that point, mm -hmm. I'm going to put this down and I'm going to do a project that I found on Ravelry, which is a free project that's um, a mug cozy. And you can practice this steaking oh, process yeah, where you put the handle and uh, and the cozy mm -hmm. you need to steak. And it's really small, super quick project. Yeah, it's not that big deal if, if it you fails, screw you do it, it again until yeah. you feel really, really comfortable with steaking. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, and I think I'll be ready to go. So this sweater ideally will be done by next episode. We shall see. Yeah. We shall see. You'll see what the design is. It's a very cool design. Mm -hmm. And here's a hint. It smells like what it's gonna be designed of. That's... No, it's <laughs> Yeah, huh? <laughs> it smells like an animal. Yeah. That is on the sweater. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That has not been knit yet. Yeah. It's going to be above where her I, face where is. My face is, is there there's going to be an animal instead. Yes. So guess which animal it is. <laughs> yes. Put it in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> also, if you have any tips for steaking for knitting, yeah. put those in the comments too. Yeah, she could use the help. <laughs> Last but not least, I'm going to show you an upcoming pattern that I'm going to release next week. You've seen it already when I was uh, making them, but it's these little February Here, mitts. On. I'm putting on the small size and Louis putting on the large size, even though his hands are about the same size as me. No, I have big, strong man hands. <laughs> big, strong man hands. Here, put on, put on that one too. So these so are, are, I know, super soft. Uh, the yarn that I used is from Wolf Folk. It's called Snow, S-N-O. And it's a marled yarn, which means there's two strands that are different colors that are twisted together. So this one, <laughs> you're so distracted. I'm like modeling. You're modeling. Uh, this one, the main color is pink and white marled together. And the contrast color is like a brown with a light, like gray? Yeah, kind of like a grayish brown mm -hmm. twisted together. And then I swapped the main color and the contrast color no. for his mitts. You want to hold them up to the camera? Yeah. And you can see the color work there. This is stranded color work in the round. And you increase for the thumbs. And the pattern comes with these two sizes. That's my favorite part, actually, is the thumb. I really yeah. like that. The little speckles on the thumbs. Yeah, I like really those, cool. too. They're very neat. Yeah. My, I think you could do some really fun stuff with color on this too. Like, yeah. oh yeah. Different ones. I was just yeah. going to say my testers have been really creative with their color choices and they've uh, even inverted the colors. Like the left hand is blue with mm. pink and then the right hand is pink with blue. Yeah. Um, some have used hand spun. Some are going to use some spin cycle. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to share those test knitter photos as well. So keep an eye out for this pattern. It's going to be released the last week of February. And I'm so excited. I want a pillow of this yarn. I could knit you a pillow and oh, some wool folks. So no. soft. You gotta buy the yarn though. Yeah, it'd be way too expensive for a pillow. <laughs> I picked up this yarn at the Royal Bee. Oh, uh, cool! So Royal Bee. We can go pick uh, it up. If you haven't checked it out, our last episode we interviewed uh, the owner of the Royal Bee, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was like, oh. <laughs> and that's it for the knitters nook. I know it's not really a knitter's nook when it starts with crochet, but it ended with knitting. <laughs> and that's what's important. And now we're going to move over to Louis' favorite corner, the crochet corner. Do I do this dance every time that I'm getting ready for you the crochet? You do a dance every time. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to start with my selfish crochet, something that I made even though I didn't really have plans for it initially, but now I do have plans for it. And you know, it's another burp. I'm addicted to making burbs, I know. But I made some really cute stuff. So the first one of my selfish crochets is a cockatoo. <laughs> yeah, hold it really close. I'm going yeah. to, yes. So I am so proud of this design for many different reasons. I'll show you something else about it when I show you the second of the selfish crochets. But something that, the reason I made this is because my dad used to have one of these when he was um, uh, a youngster. 
So I thought it'd be a really good Christmas gift for him. And my original Christmas gift didn't end up, end up getting there. So I thought, let's make him a cockatoo. And now I love it so much that I think I'm going to have to do a pattern for it. I mean, look how cute it is. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. have no choice. Yeah, I really don't. And uh, let me show you the next one so I can show you some, one of the things that I really like about the bat pattern, which also goes with the second of my selfish crochets, a macaw, which I love the macaw. And what I really like about these patterns is how I did the beak, because the beak is actually a bobble stitch. See the black bit under there? That's a bobble stitch. So you can see it there. And this top part is crocheted and sewn on, but it's really, really easy to sew on. Um, mm. If you've been following my work before, you know that I really hate sewing things together. If I can avoid it, I do. Uh, and so I tried to make it, even though you do have to sew on the beak, it's very, very simple. The same thing with all the wings and the tail and the feet. It's all just like two pieces that you just need to sew on really, really simply. Um, and I love the color changes I did with the with the wings and the tail. Mm -hmm. um, very simple to do. And uh, yeah, I'm just really proud of these patterns. I'm definitely going to do something with them in the near, near future. Uh, but it was a selfish crochet. It's not really... The, the idea here was not to make a new pattern. It was just because I wanted to make something fun at night. And I did. And I'm really proud of them. <laughs> Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> they would make the weirdest looking babies. And next up, let me talk about my latest designs. I came out with two patterns very recently that I think um, you've seen one of them, but the other one you haven't. Well, unless you've been subscribed to my channel. The first one is the little otter yeah. that we shared in the last uh, podcast. <laughs> What's really cool about this otter, um, other than the fact that you only need to sew on the arms. What? That's important. That's the only part. I know. It looks like you have to sew on a lot of parts for it, but all it is is the arms that you have to sew on. And what's also very cool is there. it's not sewn together, the arms. Instead, there's little magnets in the hands so he can hold something. So let's have him hold what the next new pattern is, which is little crocheted hearts. <laughs> And he can actually... Oopsies. Oh, no. You oh. dropped a heart. Let's try that again. Oh, no. Oop. You broke his heart. Yeah. <laughs> but he can hold on to anything. I mean, he's got a pretty good grip strength, too. Uh, yeah, last time you had him holding on to a shell. Yeah, and he can really hold on cute. to... Yeah, really whatever you want. And what's also great is if you have two of them, they can hold hands. Duh. Yeah. So this is the newest design. Uh, this was the monthly kit for... Um, Pro members, if you are a pro member on the website, uh, you what got website? on clubcrochet.com, <laughs> then you got this as a uh, as a kit this month. And it came with actually a little card that you could write a letter to your significant otter for Valentine's Day. That was the idea uh, that he could like hold. And yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm really, really proud of this pattern. I think it's very cool. There are kits available as well in the shop. Um, so if you would like to check out any of that, check it out by just going to clubcrochet.com slash otter. The next pattern, which you've already seen, are little crocheted hearts. And they it doesn't seem like much from the first look at them, but they're very cool for a few different reasons. The first one is the tutorial teaches you how to make them a bunch of different sizes. So you can make them really big or really, really tiny. I've made ones that are even like that small. I'll put a little picture somewhere around here. Which is great for like an earring. Or... Exactly. You can make earrings in like five minutes. You can make a pair of earrings in five minutes. That's cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Uh, and here's a little tiny one. Here's a bigger one. These are both made with the exact same kind of yarn or suede cotton. And you can see how you can make them different sizes. What's great is you can make them super duper duper quick, like crazy fast, because all it is is, let's see, I think 10 stitches total, 10 stitches total <laughs> to make these It looks like guys. you use some interesting methods, though, to get this shape. Like you have a, yeah. like a, a circle in it's, the center. Is that the starting point? Yeah. So it's made with a magic loop. And ah. then what you do is you work your stitches up. And you make your, the stitches slowly get bigger. So it goes single crochet, half double, double crochet. And then you bring it back in with the slip stitch and then back out and then back down. So it's really, really easy. Um, I definitely think you should check it out. Uh, it's totally free pattern. It just came out last week. Um, it was for Valentine's Day, but honestly, these are just great for making for 
anything. Yeah. Earrings. I thought it would be really fun to make these and to stuff your amigurumi with because they take no time to make and it's just... <laughs> So it's stuffed with hearts. Whatever yeah, with you just make. just one heart, you know, like you oh, actually put a little put heart a little in there. Heart in yeah, the like stuffing. a build a bear style, or like a little Care Bear tummy. Yeah, you make the heart and then you seam it on. Oh yeah, you could tummy. yeah, or you could sew a bunch of them together to make a garland or mm-hmm. something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. there's endless possibilities. Yeah, so you'll see um, in just a sec. I'll talk about my upcoming designs that are somewhat close to this. Um, and I, I think it's something I'm going to continue doing is, is these little miniature patterns that are great for teaching you new stitches. They're great for mm-hmm. making really fast. Um, yeah, they're just nice to make. So, yeah, these are my two newest designs. So cute. So cute. Mm-hmm. Next thing I want to talk about is my work in progress, which uh, I usually don't have a work in progress. But this one is a great example because it is a hard prototype for a upcoming design, which I, I'll talk about the upcoming designs in a second. But it's better to show you my work in progress because you can see how I progress in my pattern writing. So my newest work in progress is... <sighs> it's a rocket, but it's like a desk light. <laughs> like a desk light? It is a desk light. Yeah. Um, the It's a little rocket that's attached to a big thing of wire and... I'm going to hold it for you. And the stuffing is wrapped around the wire with lights, a string of lights on the inside. I lost some of the yeah, rocket fuel. Yeah, clearly a work in progress. Yeah, clearly a work in progress. I, I definitely need to figure out a way with some kind of glue to keep the stuffing down. Um, and I also need to work on where the lights are because the the part of the lights is actually stuffed into the um, the rocket itself for this one which means that you have to go into the rocket to turn the lights on and off, which oh. is way frustrating. Yeah. It, it definitely is a first draft. Um, but look at the cute little rocket with the button. Yes, it's very cute. <laughs> uh, I'm really, really proud of this because th- this is going to be the kit for next month. Um, and I'll show you some of the other designs for the rocket. I've, I've been kind of working on the rocket design in general. Um, but what I think is going to be really cool about it is you don't have to make it a stand like this. You could make it just have a long tail of of lights. So mm-hmm. you could put it on a wall, or you could put it on a fan, or you could put it... Oh, on a fan? Yeah. Don't die wherever you put it. Be careful. It's cool. It's really cool. You can make your rocket um, your rocket path. I guess that'd be... Yeah. 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 You can make your rocket path in any kind of shape you want to. Uh, and yeah, I just think it's going to be a really cool kit very unique um, and I'm designing the pattern so that it is designed with beginners in mind so that beginners can crochet it but I have advanced techniques that are optional so you can make it a little bit more um, advanced if you'd like to. In fact, let me show you my upcoming designs now. (laughs) So next up is my upcoming designs and my Upcoming designs are all going to be based around space. Based around space. Space based. <laughs> space based. Uh, so as you can see, we had that little rocket. Here are some additional versions of the rocket. So you can kind of see the design idea in mind. Um, so I decided instead of doing the button to maybe do the, the window using crochet instead. Um, so you can see this one's got a few different windows on it. Kind of looks like a face. Does it? Yeah. Okay, I can see what you're talking about. Like these are the eyes and that's the nose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of working on the design for this a little bit more. And you can kind of see also when you look at this rocket and you look at this rocket, you see how the, the seam of where the rocket is, where the red and the yellow is connected, is a little bit clearer in these newer versions. And that's one of the advanced techniques that I was talking about. Are you? Did you mean? Did you mean that the circle is more complete and there's no jog in the color changes? That and also look at the, look at how the the um. The lines. You see how it looks just a little bit more crisp. The the, where the red and the white meet here. Oh, yeah. Whereas yeah, the yeah. red and the white meet here. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's a very very subtle difference, but it's um really. Because here you can, the red is bleeding through the white a little bit in yeah. that row, but you've you've made this one using a different technique mm-hmm. to prevent that. Very mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, 
So that's kind of one of the examples of the more advanced techniques that I'm trying to include in them for not so beginners. Um, and plus, you need to be not so a beginner to make the whole standing anyhow. So yeah, so these are one of the designs for my space themed. Space, 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 space. I'm also designing a smaller version of the rocket because I wanted to and I can. So I made a little miniature version of the exact same pattern. I mean, it's not really, it's not the exact same pattern at all, but it's a very similar design. Um, and this one obviously can be made much, much quicker than the bigger ones. So my idea here was it'd just be kind of fun to make little versions as you could use as maybe a keychain, or mm -hmm. if you made this with embroidery thread, it could even be earrings. Um, yeah, which would be pretty cool. <laughs> or a charm on a necklace mm -hmm. or a bracelet. Or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm working on a smaller design for the rocket as well. So these are a few different ones that are options for my space month. I'm also doing UFOs. You saw one UFO last week. I showed you the one with the um, the, the black yarn. light. Yeah. yeah, with the glow in the dark white yarn. Yeah, so I reworked that little miniature one a little bit more. So here's the miniature version of the UFO that is very similar to the one you saw last week. It has week. my hair on it. And it has your hair on it, which <laughs> was on purpose. And then here's a larger one, and it looks a little deflated right now because it is because it doesn't have any stuffing in it. The reason it doesn't have any stuffing is I'm I'm playing around with the idea of the window being able to oh. take it off so you can have a little alien actually inside of the UFO. So it's more the of a toy. The stuffing in there with the alien would look like smoke. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good idea. Like yeah. War of the Worlds. You know? I like that. I like that a lot. Um, yeah, so you can kind of see I'm I'm working on different sizes of the design simultaneously so that... Whenever I come out with the pattern, I have alternate versions. That's the biggest thing people ask is, how do I make this bigger? How do I make it smaller? So I'm actually giving design options for making it bigger or smaller. Right. Instead of just changing the the gauge of your yarn yeah. by like making the mini one, but with bulky yarn. Mm -hmm. You're actually taking the time to make it look better in that particular weight than it would have if you... Exactly. Yeah, because if you were to make this rocket with bulky yarn you can make it like that big probably whereas if you made this miniature one with bulky yarn you could probably get it to be about this size right but you're making choices in this one that you don't make in this one because oh, yeah. of the scale mm -hmm. so if you were to make this one with bulky yarn it would have more details than this one with yeah bulky yarn. yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. but yeah that's very it's cool that you're taking the time to do that mm -hmm. with yeah I, I think it's a I think it's a worthwhile uh, effort. The thing I'm a little worried about is doing the videos for each of these because on my website, every single pattern I make has video tutorials. So that means I'm going to have to do different video tutorials for each one of these sizes. So I am giving myself more work, but I think it's worth it. And also it's what I like doing. So <laughs> who cares? Um, and one last part of these upcoming designs, space themed. Oh, actually, two more. I got two oh more upcoming designs. Oh my gosh. Designs. Every time I think I'm going to have a longer segment than him, I he know. just comes I in. I up it. And he always says, I talk too much. So the more space themed patterns that I'm going to be adding, just tacking onto this to just make my life more and more difficult in March is uh, I'm doing, I'm working on a little alien design. Um, this one is kind of themed after the uh, brain slug from Futurama. Okay. Yeah, except it's it's blue instead of green. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I figured if I'm doing space themed and I don't add an alien pattern in there, what am I doing? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then the same thing with stars. So I'm working on a bunch of different star patterns. The idea for the stars is uh, it's very similar to the hearts. This is what I was talking about earlier, is that it's a very quick, easy pattern to make, and you can make them a bunch of different sizes. So I'm working on a tutorial. <laughs> oh, no, Jules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you're so bad at doing cross-eyed. <laughs> so something about Jules that you may or may not know is that she's <laughs> terrible at going cross-eyed. I think that really that bad. is a good thing. <laughs> Yeah. You can see some of the tinier versions of the star in our little wall of swatch art here. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm working on, with the star tutorial, making a bunch of different versions of the star. So ones with sharper um, 
point, some with soft, more round points. Like Mario stars. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this one is kind of more of a Mario star feel for a star, whereas you can, you know, there's just a lot of different options when you want to make stars. So I thought, well, why not put them all into one big tutorial, about, make it easy for what everybody. What about a different number of points, like a star updated mm -hmm. with six points? Yeah, doing like six-pointed stars and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, and then what's great about all these stars, and actually something about these hearts that I haven't thought about until right now, is that if you sew two of the heart, two of the stars together, which is this case right now, I crocheted two of the same star, and then I sewed them together, oh. you actually make like a thick yeah. star, which would be good for using for like um, a baby mobile or even just toys in general. Like you got a little like a ninja star now. Just make sure it's not small enough for the baby to swallow. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you definitely could do that with these hearts as, as well, which I haven't done, but now I'm going to because you absolutely can. Just sew in two of these hearts together and it would give it a little bit of a thicker feel. It'd be cool if you even did a different color yeah, on doing, one side. So I like have a, a pink-red situation or white-pink. or. I have this red. rainbow one, which I think is, yeah, it's the exact same oh. size. If you do a rainbow one. I actually made this one for your, for uh -huh. Valentine's Day yeah. for you uh, during the live stream. Yeah. Yeah. I love rainbows. So I've got a lot in store for March. Yeah. Um, I have a strong feeling I won't uh, accomplish everything that I'm setting myself out to do in March, which is okay. You know, uh, I'm shooting for the stars. <laughs> Stupid. So um, funny. Five years of this. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. So we have a special guest that wanted to say goodbye uh, he was being very persistent, and uh, so we ha we had to let him in. Also, he just he wants to send his love on Valentine's Day. Yeah, he's that's such a thing. such a love bug. That's the thing. Thank he you so is. much for watching episode five of the Loop and Pro podcast. If you want to follow us on social media, go ahead and check out the links below. We have all of our show notes in the description below, which features. The yarn that we use for our projects, the name of the projects, the designer names, anything that is related to what we talked about, it's in the show notes. Check them out. <laughs> well, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we will be back soon with more episodes. If you have any questions, thoughts, suggestions, put them in the comments below. Yeah. I forgot to say earlier, I'm still looking for a good name for these mittens. So if you have a good name idea, put that in the comments below too. Yeah. We read all the comments. We, we do. We reply to most of them, but we definitely read all of them. Yeah. Um, make sure to like and subscribe and uh, join the email list and blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Pasta la pizza. Happy knitting. And happy hooking. Bye. You want to say bye, Kimbo? Oh, not to me. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, let me try.